This is called fun declarations. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to put some code up, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to try and uh, work out what that code does. So we're going to start off uh, nice and gently. So here we've got a variable y of type pointer to x, and we're all very experienced C++ programmers here. Uh, I imagine we can all look at this and use our years of experience, and we know that this is a multiplication. Right? I mean, just obviously. <laughs> right? Just, just, just jumps out at you. Um, and very similarly, so here we've got uh, A, B, paren C, and it doesn't take much use of C++, you know, just uh, maybe a couple of years, uh, that you can just obviously know that this is a function declaration. Right? So this is a function B, takes an argument of type C, returns an A, uh, this is a function declaration. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, so... Okay, this one, this, right, so this is like A, B, paren C. We're going to do something slightly different on the next one. So the next one is A, B, paren C. And again, with your years of experience using C++, you can look at this and you can know that this is, of course, a variable declaration. Here, uh, C is an int, uh, A has a constructor taking an int, so we're, we have a variable declaration which, you know, obviously, right? Okay, those, that, that, was, that was the warm-up. Those were the easy ones. This one is genuinely a little bit trickier. So in order to understand this, you have to know that final is kind of special. It's like a pseudo keyword, a context-sensitive keyword. So it's only a keyword in particular places in the grammar and otherwise it's available as a regular identifier. So we're sort of abusing that here, and we are uh, declaring a struct of type final, uh, sorry, a struct named uh, final from which we cannot inherit, and which has no members. Except we're not. That's what this line of code is doing. <laughs> the, second line of code, the second line of code is declaring a variable of type struct final using an elaborated type specifier, and then doing aggregate initialization. So I have to. So I can't take credit for this. I got this off Twitter. I think it was Richard Smith. Um, so I can't take credit for this, but uh, I, I really liked it, so I borrowed it. Okay, last one, and this one genuinely is quite complicated. So we'll walk through it. Okay. So what we've got here is a class template A takes a non-type template parameter um, of uh, type int. And then it's got a member alias template uh, B, which resolves to type int. So we've got some arbitrary constructs for function, calculate. And we're going to use the result of calculate, use that as our template argument for A. And then look at A's nested B member. We're just going to instantiate that with four, doesn't really matter. This is going to resolve, this type expression is going to resolve to an int. So what's going to happen is we're going to initialize Z as an int uh, with value zero. Okay, so it's a very funny way of writing in z equals zero, uh, but that's what's happening. You can you can look at that, look uh, you know, look at it for a few minutes and work out that that's what's going on. You all agree? Yeah, yeah. There was there's just one teeny tiny little thing I kind of forgot to mention. Um, there's a specialization of a. And so what happens is if calculate returns four, we're going to hit the specialization. And now the name B refers not to a type, but to a value. And so if calculate returns four, A of four colon colon B is a value of type int. And the following token is not an angle bracket, it's a less than. Right? So what this is saying is, is 99 less than 4? And then the result of that is promoted to int and compared against 0. And this, this is entirely valid C++ code, right? This is the second pair of angle brackets is, if calculate returns 4, is actually greater than less than. There are two entirely different valid parses of this expression, depending on what calculate returns. <laughs> so 
So what does this, what does this code do? Well, I don't know. Because we can't know without knowing the result of calculate. OK, so this is all very silly. And it was supposed to kind of be entertaining because, you know, that's the idea behind lightning talks. But there is sort of a serious point here that the syntax of C++ makes our lives difficult, right? It makes tooling difficult. Our tooling is way behind other languages. And part of the reason for that is this. The only thing that can meaningfully parse C++ is a C++ compiler. You can see you need to be able to do full concepts or evaluation just to parse the language just to try and work out, uh, you know, whether we've got a syntax error or not. And more than that, it burdens us as programmers because we can't just take uh, an arbitrary few lines of C++ and work out, you know, in isolation. We always have to know the, ourselves the context that that code is in. It burdens us. So I'll leave you with one final thought. Um, I don't know whether I've got this right because I only learned that carbon existed a few hours ago. I think this is, uh, the syntax is similar to this if this is not absolutely correct. Um, what does this code do? Well, I think this is much clearer, much easier to understand, not just for me, uh, but if I was writing a parser as well. So if this is the future, carbon or val, who knows? Um, I, I, yes, of course. Um, but uh, if, this is, if this is the future for us as C++ programmers, then uh, perhaps, perhaps the future is looking bright. So that's it. Thank you very much.